Hey guys, Nish Quick here. Hope you guys are all caught up on my latest videos discussing and theorizing on the founders of Xenoblade Chronicles 3's Way 4 DLC. Today, I'm gonna be speculating on the founders of House Van Damme and House Doyle. This one should be fun, so strap on in and let's jump right into it. So I talked a bit about these two in another video which you can check out above on the top right, but I do want to go a little more in depth over here. Let's start off with Founder Van Damme, here's the description of his statue in the city. In memory of the founder of House Van Damme and the city's restorer and liberator. The original incarnation of the city was once laid to ruin by Mobius N's hand. The founder realized fully the power of Ouroboros, heretofore limited, and fought against N ousting him. Once victorious, he gathered the old city's people scattered to the winds and reestablished the city. With the city restored, he left its government in the hands of the founder Doyle and departed on a lonely expedition. No records exist of his fate thereafter. Heirs of Vandem's lineage only returned to the new city several centuries later. Oral tradition has it that the founder was master of the classical art of fist fighting, and the scions of House Van Damme carry on the custom to this day. So, like I said in the past, this guy over here, let's call him Mr. Van Damme, because I did in the last video. Mr. Van Damme is an, I say, quote unquote, ancestor to Noah in some way. First of all, he looks very similar to him. Even Yuni points it out in this cutscene where we get to see the founders. Look at this, he's got Noah's chin. Just to clarify and reiterate, I want to explain how he relates to Noah. I believe Mr. Van Damme is the grandson of Mobius N. N, of course, was a past version of Noah, who with his Mio, who we now know in the base game as M, had a son. After their time ran up, N and M die, but eventually both turn to the side of Mobius, while their son's future is unknown. I think Mr. Van Damme, or Founder Van Damme, is the son of this boy once he is all grown up and he has a family of his own. In the short trailer we got for the DLC story, Founder Van Damme can be heard saying, like killing Grandad wasn't enough for you. Like killing Grandad wasn't enough for you! I think this is being said to Zed or Alvis relating to the death of his grandfather, which led to him becoming Mobius N. Watch that video I mentioned earlier for more context on this. But what if he's talking about another grandfather? This could be a big change to the previous theory, but what if Mr. Van Damme isn't the son of this boy, but what if he's actually this boy right here? If that's the case, that wouldn't make the grandfather mentioned in this teaser N, it would probably be referring to Rex instead. Because you guys might remember, Rex is the father of Mio, thus making him the father of M, who is another version of Mio, who is the mother of this boy. This means that N, Zed, or Alvis, or some villain might be responsible for the death of a Rex. But I can see Rex being a mainstay in the party till the very end, so honestly I don't really know about this. But regardless of who he is, Founder Van Damme has a solid connection to M and N, and this little boy over here, and thus making his connection to Rex a little stronger as well, because M is Rex's daughter. I personally subscribe to the theory that he's the son of this boy, which would make him the grandson of N. But we'll see. We'll see once the DLC story releases. Let's move on to Miss Doyle over here. Let's see her statue description. In memory of the founder of House Doyle and the city's liberatrix, directly descended from those who established the first original city. Her whereabouts were lost after N's ravaging of the city of old, but upon encountering the other founders, she committed herself fully to the fight. This founder is said to have a familial relation to the founder of Vandem, with scant extent records suggesting that they are likely brother and sister. She fought alongside the founder of Vandem then, who was the elder of the two and brought the power of Ouroboros to completion. 
Said to have been bright and wise, this founder laid the cornerstones for much of the city's governance and legal systems. First of all, looks like Doyle and Van Damme are siblings. Another thing is Doyle is said to be descended from those who established the first city which was also at Hope's Rest. This increases the chances of my prediction about Van Damme being Anne's grandson and being the son of this little boy over here. What if this little boy eventually grew up to be the original founder of the city at Hope's Rest in the Cadencia region? He then has two children, Van Damme and Doyle, who he raises to become Ouroboros candidates and fighters in the conflict against Mobius, hoping to free his father N from the clutches of Zed or Alvis. And after a tough fight with N and the destruction of the original city at Hope's Rest, these two children, Van Damme and Doyle, are the founders of the new city at Sword March and are the first to unlock the true power of Ouroboros. Also, I just wanted to remind you guys, please give this video a like, it really really helps out. And awesome news guys, we are 23 subscribers away as of recording this video from hitting 500 subscribers and reaching my goal of reaching 500 subscribers before the release of Tears of the Kingdom. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't and join the journey on the road to Tears of the Kingdom and Xenoblade Chronicles 3's DLC. Without further ado, let's continue on with this video. But more on Doyle, looks like she's the one who establishes law and order within the city by establishing a political system. But her views, opinions, and rules might have created a more conservative family legacy compared to the other houses within the city. We can see her legacy in many of the quests of Xenoblade Chronicles 3's base game, as we see members of House Doyle such as Garrett enforce rules with a strict attitude and defiance towards House Van Damme and Monica's rule. Garrett berates the Ouroboros candidates for seeking out a fight to help aid the efforts against Mobius in Monica's Ascension quest, and even denies Romero, his daughter, Julieta's hand in marriage, just because Romero is a part of the lost numbers. Sure, he wouldn't want his own future son-in-law to leave his daughter a young widow, but at the same time, we can see Garrett's approach to fending off Mobius and defending the city differs drastically from Monica and House Van Damme. So I wonder, will we see some tension and hot-headed sibling rivalry in this DLC story with Mr. Van Damme and Miss Doyle? Could sibling rivalry lead to family tensions? More on this later. Overall, I think Doyle and Van Damme will act sort of as the two primary party members or protagonists of the story, and the narrative will be experienced mostly through their point of view. We'll see the fall of the first city, their original home, and see their desire, urge, and determination to build a new home for their future offspring and the rest of the city folk to continue on their legacy. And on the way, they might even lose some friends, family, and companions, and maybe even their own father and grandfather in the process, whether that's N's son or even Rex. When it comes to House Van Damme, those of you who've played the base game of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 definitely know a lot about the role this family has in the story. Of course, we see three Van Dams in the story of Xenoblade 3 who carry on Founder Van Dam's legacy, and those are Guernica Van Dam, Monica Van Dam, and Gondor. Another important thing about Van Dam and Doyle is we'll see the true power of Ouroboros through their eyes and see them fully harness it to its full extent. Of course, with the help of Shulk and Rex, they'll learn how to withstand the powerful burden, even the creator of Ouroboros, who is Nia can help them as a mentor as well if Shulk and Rex are too busy mentoring Reed and Cassini. When it comes to this Ouroboros power, I think these two will be the first to interlink and fully harness the capabilities of this unique power with their interlink capabilities. Specifically with Mr. Van Dam, we'll probably see the origins of the Sword of Origin or Lucky Seven. This might be a very big story beat for the entire narrative since we do ideally need to see and hear more context on the origins of the Sword of Origin slash Lucky Seven and even Ouroboros powers and the Ouroboros stones, both being products of the queens of Ionios, Melia and Nia respectively, who have full control over Origin itself. 
Also, an interesting observation a few friends of mine have noticed is that the founder statues are split between Cavesi and Agnian founders. Well, city residents aren't necessarily classified as Cavesi or Agnian since they're an entirely separate faction, but there is still a distinct separation between the founders. Reed and Ortiz are on the side of Kevis, obviously, and Rhodes and Cassini are on the side of Agnes, which also makes sense. But why is Van Tam on the side of Agnes when he resembles Noah, and why is Doyle on the side of Kevis when she not only resembles Mio, but she's most definitely a Gormati from the world of Xenoblade 2, which everyone from Agnes is from as well. The thing about most Agnians is the majority of them are some form of blade, either a full-on blade like Senna, a flesh eater like Mio, or a blade eater like Tyon. You can see their core crystal somewhere on their body. It may not always be on their chest like we see for someone like Juniper. Their core crystal is over here. But they still have some form of a core crystal. Even Tyon's blade eater mark can even be seen when he has his swimsuit outfit on. So does Doyle not have one, even though she's most likely M's daughter? She's 100% some sort of Gormati since she's got the ears like Senna says. That one, she looks a bit like Mimi. Van Damme being on the side of Agnes could sort of be in connection to the Van Damme we knew in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but I don't know, maybe that's just a reference to the name, I'm not really sure about that. It's an interesting observation though. So remember that conflict between Van Damme and Doyle I mentioned before? Well, it's not really implied to happen and not really guaranteed, but it might just be a thing that divides House Van Damme and Doyle in the many hundreds of thousands of years following the establishment of the city at Sword March. But what if we get to see some of that tension boil up within the story itself? Remember this quote from Van Damme's statue. With the city restored, he left its government in the hands of the founder, Doyle, and departed on a lonely expedition. No records exist of his fate thereafter, and heirs of Van Damme's lineage only returned to the city several centuries later. So after the fight against N and establishing the new city at Sword March, Van Damme leaves. Though it could be an amicable departure, could maybe even hint at some disagreement between the siblings. Maybe with how the city should be governed, or possibly how Mobius should be handled from here on out. Since that is the Van Damme slash Doyle conflict we see in the present in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. But just imagine this. Your city is ravaged by the Mobius version of your grandfather, who destroys everything and nearly kills everyone. This would definitely make some want to fight back, but others might want to stay sheltered and protect themselves from within, so they don't suffer the same fate as the last time. Who knows if Van Damme and Doyle in the past will have the same disagreement as Monica and Garrett do in the present, but I don't know, we'll see. But here is my final prediction relating to Mr. Van Damme, before we close out, listen to this. Heirs of Van Damme's lineage only return to the city several centuries later. So imagine, after Van Damme leaves, he starts a family and has kids. One kid takes up his art of fist fighting and loves to hear stories of their dad's valiant expeditions with the other founders and their mentors. And Van Damme, this kid's father, keeps telling them, one day seek out the city at Sword Marge. There you'll find a place filled with hope, and you'll be able to work with others to fight for the future. This kid and their siblings and family would eventually come back to the city and re-establish their father's legacy as the remaining members of House Van Damme. But here's the big problem with this. How can Van Damme start a family outside of the city? I feel like Mobius would easily find them and put an end to all of them in an instant. But it does mention his heirs return to the city centuries later. So maybe not his direct descendants, but his descendants from the far-flung future, though still way in the past compared to the events of Xenoblade Chronicles 3's base game. This still implies that these descendants and heirs return to the city from outside of the city and within Ionio, so how could this happen without Mobius finding them? I have no clue, but I hope we find out. And to those of you who watched my House Cassini and Reed video, 
I know my theory about Gondor's ancestor being the founder of House Cassini wasn't too substantial and plausible, and honestly I agree, but here's another option. What if the heir to House Van Damme, who returns to the city far into the future once it's established at Sword March, is named Gondor? It could be a man or a woman, but regardless, founder Van Damme's heir or descendant would be none other than the original Gondor Van Damme. They would return to the city and re-establish House Van Damme's significance and authority within the city and lead the fight against Mobius. And this person would be the person Monica names her daughter after because of their legacy within the family. And maybe they're an absolute goofball and because of these stories from the past that Gondor has heard, that's why she hates the name. I don't know. Honestly, House Van Damme has a history of being really bad at naming things. We got Noah naming his Lucky Seven Blade, and he's so embarrassed to even tell Mio the real name of the sword. <laughs> and Monica has done the same thing when naming her daughter Gondor. Gondor hates this name, and Monica also named her signature curry dish Mona Curry. <laughs> Gondor also hates that very much as well. And N almost did this, but dodged the bullet by having M name their son. Speaking of which, I wonder what this kid's name is. So I'm looking forward to seeing Mr. Van Damme be terrible at naming things in this DLC story. So what do you guys think of these theories of mine about House Van Damme and House Doyle? Again, a lot of this stuff might be wrong, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Who are Van Damme and Doyle's parents? Who is their grandfather? What will their legacy in the city be? Let me know down below. And post some more Xenoblade Chronicles 3 theories before the DLC story comes out. Hopefully this video is out before we get a new trailer. Also, like and subscribe for more Xenoblade Chronicles 3 content like this. I have one final Founders related video about the elusive and mysterious 7th Founder. Be on the lookout for that video. And again, thanks so much for all the support, I really appreciate it. This is Nishquick signing off, have a great day and go play some great games today, like Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I'll see you guys in the next one, later.